yesterday in the Barton Tutors Facebook group, um, somebody made a comment or somebody made a post who was asking for information about how um, to tutor Foundation and Sounds virtually. So um, I gave some input and suggested I could make a video and a whole lot of you were interested um, more than I was expecting. So here we go. I'm going to talk to you about how I teach Foundation and Sounds virtually. Um, I know that there's a lot of panic right now because there's a lot of people who are having to transition to virtual learning, which is not something that I know a lot of you were prepared or interested in doing, um, but that's okay. The good news is really, I think that the majority of programs out there can be taught online. It just takes a little bit of creativity and finding the right tools. So that's a lot of what I'm going to share with you today. Um, so whenever I teach Foundation and Sound virtually, and by the way, I only teach virtual. Um, I own Fearless Readers and we've been virtual from the get-go. So we were kind of blessed that we went that route because we're a pretty new company and then all of this pandemic craziness started happening. Um, anyway, I digress. So we use a combination of two things. I use Google um, Jamboard and I also use Miro Board. Now, I know there's a lot of people who use Miro Board exclusively. Um, one, if you haven't seen Miro, Miro Board before, you're not sure what it is, I'll show you that and I'll kind of talk about why I don't exclusively use it. Also, I should mention that uh, Foundation and Sound does have, they came out with their own um, virtual thing to do this online. Um, the only reason I don't use it is because I had already worked really hard on designing my whole setup and it works for me, so I wasn't really interested um, in that, but it might be good for some people. So if you want something that's like already set up and you don't have to do any work, you might want to check that out. Otherwise, what I'm going to be showing you is pretty easy. It just does take a little bit of time to set it up. So first, I'm just going to open the stuff and show you um, what it looks like. That way you can see if it's something that would work for you or not. And then later I'll take you through a little bit of a setup and like how you would go about doing this for yourself. All right, so first I'm going to show you my Jamboard. Let me get that pulled up. All right, so this is my Google Drive. This is where I have all of my foundation and sounds lessons. I've pre-created all of them. So um, Jamboard is kind of like PowerPoint. It's kind of like a slideshow. It doesn't have the features, like nearly as many settings and everything that PowerPoint does, um, but it works basically like a slideshow. I liked that because of the simplicity that it offers. Um, I mostly work on foundation and sounds with young students, and those students tend to have a lot of attention issues. So I wanted something that was really like visually clean and didn't have a whole lot of clutter going on. So I'm going to hop into lesson five. Um, I think I actually already have that pulled up, but I'll just show you what it looks like. So as you know, with foundation and sounds, you typically start out with some sort of review game. Um, so as this loads here, we would start with let's play. So um, we would start off playing some sort of game. And at the end, I'm going to briefly talk about um, some of the games that I like to use for foundation and sounds. That's kind of a challenge as well. Um, not only teaching foundation and sounds, but doing games virtually can be a little bit difficult. So I have some resources for you that I hope you might like. So as I said, it works like a slideshow. So we just click through. Um, we're in lesson five right here, teaching the and sounds. Okay, so the first part is review with sequencing. So this right here is actually like a card that I've created. So I used the um, foundation and sounds cards that I purchased. I have a physical kit that I have. So I just scanned those in. When it came to the big ones, just with my technology and scanning and everything, it just was easier if I made, um, these big cards. Actually, my partner, she's our co-founder, Shannon Ruddle. Some of you might have seen her posting and Barton. She made these things. Um, so the sequencing is super easy. Just bring them back over and then you can either when you're done slide them back or just hit control V and it puts everything where keyboard shortcuts are really important if you're teaching virtually guys. <laughs> so control V is the undo button um, on uh, not a Mac, basically any computer except for a Mac. If it is a Mac, it's probably 
commands command B or Apple Z. I don't know. I'm not a Mac user, obviously. Okay. So then we have our tiles. These are little images that I imported. Um, I don't think there's a way to create the little boxes in here, but you have your tiles that you sequence and do that. So this is all still in the warm up. Um, now we are introducing the new sound card. Okay, so this is like I would lay it out on the table and ask you, you know, what is this a picture of? Great. So then we have our sound stoplight. Again, this is something Shannon created just because it was easier. So the cool thing about Jamboard is over here, if you can see my mouse, we have the laser pointer option. So that's kind of a fun thing that kids like to use. So you'll say sun nice and slowly and it kind of follows. Of course, they're gonna go crazy all over the place, but that's fine because there's another keyboard shortcut. If you don't already know this, um, there's a keyboard shortcut to immediately get rid of their mouse control. So if you have a student that's like clicking and crazy and you can't get the control back, there's a keyboard shortcut for that. I think on my computer it's control alt G. I'm not sure, but just look in your Zoom settings under keyboard shortcuts if you wanna see a video on that. I think I actually have one, um, but let me know and I can show you that as well. Okay, so. Sound stoplight. Um, this is where we would be talking about if it's a lip sound or a tongue sound. Now, guys, something else super important. Um, when you're talking about these things, right now, if you see me, I'm super teeny tiny in the corner. Okay, so whenever I'm teaching foundation and sounds and I'm talking about what is my, you know, what are my lips doing? What is my tongue doing? Open, you know, quiet vibrating, those kinds of things. I stop sharing my screen and I'm just talking to my student. Um, there's nothing else going on. It makes it a lot easier for them to focus, okay? So I have found that if I am trying to teach my student something new or we're trying to talk about, you know, lip sounds, tongue sounds, all that, and my screen is shared, like 90% of the time they're not listening to me. Um, so we would come down back to here and um, we would talk about it. I probably wouldn't be wearing any crazy distracting lipstick like I am right now. Um, so yeah, so when it comes to talking about the lip sounds or tongue sounds, it's kind of awkward, but I just put my mouth real close to the camera. Um, that's kind of the best way to do it. And I have my students put their mouth close to the camera, you know, tell them, look at your own lips whenever you're saying this, instead of having a mirror. Because, you know, if you have a mirror for foundation and sound, the nice thing about virtual is there's just a camera that they use. So that's nice as well. So once we've talked about if it's a lip sound or a tongue sound, um, I would share my screen again, come back over here, and then we have our handy dandy chart. Okay, so this is lesson five. Um, so they already have a lot of sounds down. So then we would be putting this where it goes. I think it's the, yeah, it's the lip sound for quiet over here. That's where it would go. And then we would go to the next thing. The next one is ship and same exact thing. Stoplight, we would stop sharing our screen and talk about what kind of sound it is. Come back in here, put this where it goes and then from there we have sequencing. So you first sequence with two sounds. So we have that here. They sequence their little sounds. Same thing for three sounds. And then color tiles, two sounds, color tile, three sounds, and then that's it. Okay, um, for, um, for which word, there you go, for which word, whenever we play that, same thing, I come back, I don't have any like cards we're you know, looking at or anything. Um, if they needed to remember what sound, then I would hold up the card, or if you needed to have the card up in front of the student, then you can just go to, um, like go back to your Jamboard and just have that one slide where it's just that card. All right, I was trying really hard to get this filmed before my son woke up from his nap, but he just woke up. So he is seven months old and he is in a bouncer right now. So hopefully he is not too terribly noisy. If he starts making some noise, I'm gonna pause it. There might be some awkward cuts, but that's okay. All right, so next I'm gonna show you Miro board. Now, Miro board is essentially just a virtual whiteboard. So it's just a whole big whiteboard. It's really cool. 
it can be a little intimidating at first if you've never used it before, especially if you wouldn't consider yourself like a tech savvy person, but that's okay. If you just take a little bit of time to get to know it, there's a lot that you can do with it. And I have found to really, really like it a lot. Um, and I think that a lot of you will like it because, you know, whenever you're in person, if you need to demonstrate something for the child or, you know, create something, you just create it and then you put it on the table and do whatever you need to with it. So Miro board allows you to do the same thing virtually. You just have to figure out how to use it. Um, there is, by the way, Jamboard's free, Miro board has a free version and I only use the free version. Um, there's only like a few features in there that I actually use for Miro board um, and it's super easy. So let me get that pulled up now. Okay, so um, as you can see at the top, here's all of my little tabs, mine is my email. <laughs> so um, I have my, uh, Jamboard over here. This is my notes. So here's my Jamboard. Here is everything um, for Miro board. So I kind of like having everything all in one tab. That way, whenever I'm working with my student, I don't have to click around and find a bunch of different files. It's just all at the top. I'm just clicking tabs. So that's really nice. Okay, so this is what I have done for foundation and sounds. Um, now, you have some options here. Some people exclusively use Miro board to teach foundation and sounds and they, what they do is all of these images right here, they import all of these, they import all of the big cards that you would have. So your four charts for quiet or vibrating lip slash tongue sounds, your sound stoplight, your vowel chart, and if there's anything else I'm forgetting, those two. Um, and they would just display it all in Miro board. What you do is you can zoom in and out so there's some other stuff I'm going to show you in just a minute, things that I've created, but you have a really huge board to play with and you move around. The one irritating thing is whenever your student is getting used to the mouse and they need to sequence a sound or something, put something on the stoplight, if they go like this, they're going to keep going forever and ever. And it's kind of irritating because you have to bring it all back. That is the one downfall of Mirror Board. I haven't found a way to like lock the screen. Anyway, so what I do is when I first start teaching foundation and sound for the majority of the time, I'm pretty exclusively just using my Jamboard and my slideshow because that's all I need. But once the student has learned like all of the vowels, after that, you're getting into some of the later lessons. There's so many cards to keep track of. It's to me a little bit difficult to do it in Miro board. The reason I don't start off in Miro board is because I'm getting to know my student and I feel like Miro board can be a little overwhelming having all of those materials in here and they don't necessarily need to see everything all at once. So I like Jamboard because I just have one little slide at a time and I go to the next slide and they only ever have to see exactly what we're talking about at that time. So it can be a little bit um, less like visually stimulating for them. Now, once they get into the later lessons of foundation and sounds, that's when we start having a lot of cards that we're working with. And it's kind of nice to have this big whiteboard that I can pull around on. Now, this, what you're looking at right here, I specifically created for the part where they have to um, do, I forget exactly, changing sounds where they, you build a word. Um, I'm just building something random. So they would build a word using the sound stoplight. Okay, and then you would have to change, you know, ask them to change a sound. So right now this says bun and make it say um, sun. I don't know. He's crying. Hopefully you can't hear that. So they would put it back and change it like so. Um, and again, control Z puts everything back where it goes. I always use that. Um, okay. I also have my tiles built over here. So when it comes to changing sounds with tiles, we do the exact same thing. And these are just the colors that I picked. If you don't like them, you can pick different colors. So this is pretty much what we do. Now, um, before I get into how to set up your Jamboard and how to set up your Miro board, I am going to um, pause real quick because you can probably hear Wesley crying. Um, so I'm going to go tend to that and come back. 
And then um, I'm gonna show you a couple games and stuff as well. Okay, so something else kind of fun that I have done, um, I'm gonna talk real briefly about games. So let me go back here. Okay, so um, it can be kind of hard to convert whatever games you were playing before in person um, and kind of do those online. Sometimes that can be challenging. So I was just gonna show you what I have done. So over here, I have um, a very simple warm up board game that I created. All we do is, you're gonna need a dice. So to do that, I just type in virtual dice. Boom, virtual dice, you have different sides of the dice. So it's the first thing that comes up. It's not even a, like a website. It's just what Google comes up with. So you would roll the dice. The student rolls a four. They would go four spaces. One, two, three, four. They tell me what they landed on and the sound that it makes. So they landed on thumb and it says, so then it's my turn. So I, I designed this because my student uh, that I was working with loves racing and cars and anything that has to do with cars. So this is like a little racetrack that we do. Um, if you want it to take less time, then you can pick a higher sided dice. That way they'll in one roll like go through 12 spots. You can make the board a little bit shorter. Um, it's super simple. It's just a little tedious to create, um, but once you have it in there, it's done. Um, and then the only other thing is I did if they landed on a vowel, um, they had to tell me that it is a vowel. And if they forget to tell me it's a vowel, then I get to steal their spot. So that's something super simple that you can do. Um, we also have coming soon a really fun board game that we have designed. Um, I designed this for my student and he loved it. Um, and so we decided that a lot of you guys might like it too. So we created like a scrapped together version in Miro board um, and we took that and now we've been making it really pretty using a little bit of graphic design tools and stuff. Um, so we have some really fun board games coming soon and those will be really easy for you to import as well. Um, and then I also was going to show you um, some of the iSpy games that we use. Um, and also, one more thing before we go, talking about games. Um, this is something really simple you can do as well. It is uh, for which word. If you have a student that's a little bit more visual, this is something really simple I created in Jamboard as well. I literally just, do, I don't own any of the images you're about to see. I just Googled or looked up some clip art and this is a fun little witch word game you can throw together. So this is um, mm or mm sounds. Um, so this one is looking at mm, so monkey car. They have to tell you which one starts with it. And then you go to the next one, snake mask, which one starts with it. We had one little boy um, that we were working with who, liked this because of how you know visual it was that's something super simple you can come up with again I just googled pictures and just put them in there so <laughs> that's what you can do okay so lastly um, if you are looking for some other games I'm going to talk about games and then I'm going to show you how to set this up so um, we also have recently put out a bunch of I spy games that we spent forever creating. Again, you get so inspired by your students. Um, I was teaching foundation and sounds to one little guy who didn't love the program, <laughs> pretty bored with it. So I was trying to find ways to make it more fun for him. Um, and this idea just kind of popped in my head and he had a lot of fun playing with playing it. Um, so we like went hard and designed 68 different iSpy activities for you to do with your students. Um, so I will show you those just real quick. So um, if you did purchase these games, we have them on our website. I'll put the link below. Um, this is what it would look like. If you want to, you can create something similar to it. Um, it's just a little bit time consuming. But for example, um, here are some games that we have. This is just 
previewing it. Um, but this is a really fun game that I use to warm up with my students or I use as breaks. Um, during my breaks, I like for them to do things that are relevant in some way. That way they're still learning, um, but it technically is a break. So this is fun. It's just you pull up really pretty different images. And in this one, you're looking for things that start with M. Mm. So you would have monkey, um, moose, uh, mouse, different things like that. Face one, food, um, this thing, all that. We had a few Barton tutors test it and they really liked it. So I just thought I would mention that um, if you are looking for something additional to spice up your foundation and sound lesson. Um, okay, so the next thing is I'm going to show you how I actually set up these boards. Okay, and we're gonna start with um, setting up your jam board and then um, how to set up your Miro board as well. Okay, so the first thing that you're gonna wanna do is um, take whatever you want to have digitized and find a way to scan it in. Okay, so I had, um, I don't have them right here, but all of your little sound cards, I have a printer that I scanned them in, so that was super simple for me to do. You have a, if you don't have a scanner and you have a smartphone, you can most likely take pictures of the cards. Just spend a little bit of time. You're gonna have to take a picture of each one, make sure it's a little bit high quality, and then you can import those pictures into your computer and go to like paint or something and you can edit them and trim out the excess stuff. Um, if that is not something, if that's gonna take too long or you don't wanna fool with that, then I think it's okay for you to find pictures online or free images of, you know, it's pretty simple stuff like a map or a fish and you can just design your own card pretty simply. Um, so the first step is to figure out if you're gonna design, design your own stuff or if you're gonna import it and get all of that imported. As I said, for the um, sound cards, we use the ones from Foundation and Sounds, but for the, um, uh, <laughs> I don't know if you can hear Wesley is like growling in the corner. Yeah. Um, so for the um, for the other things, we made our own. So for the vibrating sounds and quiet sounds, we made all of our own stuff. So let's hop back over here to Jamboard. I'm gonna go to my Google Drive. Um, real quick, hold on. Okay, so um, in order to set up a Jamboard, you need to have a Google account or a way to access Google Drive. So for that, all you need to do is just create a Gmail address. Um, once you have your Gmail email, then you can sign into Drive. Let me show you that. Okay, so this is my Drive. So it's my Drive and then this is my Foundation and Sounds material. So you can access Drive, if you don't know, by going to drive.google.com, as you see right up here, drive.google.com, or if you're signed in, you have these little dots over here. These are your Google apps, and you can click Drive there. That'll take you to your main drive. This is a folder I have within my drive called Foundation and Sounds Materials. Go away, there we go. Okay, so, I have one folder that has all of my foundation and sounds images in it, which is super handy. So these are all of my sound cards and everything that we've created. Okay, so to create your first jam board, you're going to come over here and click new. Go down to more. Okay, and you might not have known this, but you can do a whole lot of stuff with Google. So Google Drive does more than just Google Docs, Sheets, and Slides. You have Google Forms, so this is how we send surveys to parents or ask for feedback when we had some of you test our games. Um, and then come down here, you have Google Jamboard. So, okay, this is a shared folder that I have with some of my coaches, so that's why that disclaimer popped up. Here is your untitled jam. So you're gonna title it, and from there, really all you're doing is just going through um, Foundation and Sounds. I look at each lesson so I would pull up lesson one and I would look at the first procedure and whatever that first procedure is is what I'm putting on this slide so if I'm going to upload an image I click here to add image this is why I said to upload all of your images into drive first into some folder because you can upload from google drive 
So I would go to my foundation and sound, foundation and sound images, and then I click whatever I need. Let's say the first one is map. Where's my map? Map. Oh, hello. It was like the first one. Okay. So there's my map. It's going to load. My internet's a little slow right now, so it might take a second. There it is. Okay, and as you can see, this card isn't totally perfect. If you are a little bit more of a perfectionist than I am, then you can take some more time making sure they're okay. My scanner was just being difficult that day, and I didn't want to redo all of it, so this works for me. Um, then you just click next up here, and you import whatever else you need. Um, that's really all there is to it. Now, once you have, the good thing about this is you don't have to create 12 different Jamboards and drag all, everything in there. Once you create the first Jamboard for your first lesson, you're going to go to lesson two, and here's what you will do. Is that right? Okay. So once I created my FIS lesson one, I right clicked, and then I just make a copy. I'm not actually going to do this, but once I make a copy, there's, you know, foundation and sound builds off of each other. So I made a copy and then all I did was just make a couple small tweaks and then I just have to add in the new sound cards and that's pretty much it. So that's, that's all you do. Now, once you get into the higher lessons down here, lesson 11 and 12, I'm going to click on this. It might be a hot mess because I haven't um, fixed it since the last time I went through with this student. Let this one load. We we're having a time today. My cat is on my desk. Wesley is over in the corner. He's teething, so fun times. Okay. So here is all of this stuff that I have going on. We have lots of sound cards. This is the vowel chart. This was so simple to make. Now we have all of the vowels. Here's the next thing, and it just keeps building. Um, there's not much, I haven't used these very much, okay? It's all kind of blank and wonky because at this point, we had so much stuff going on, it was just easier to come over here into mirror board and use that. It was just a lot cleaner, so that's what we did there. Okay, so that is how to set up, that's how to set up your Jamboard. Okay, so now let's go into Miro board. So for Miro, you are going to need to create your own account. Um, so you'll just go to Miro.com, pull it up. I'll click back here and see, here we go. So you'll go to Miro, create a free account. And then once you get signed in, um, you have, it does limit how many boards you can come up with. I've only ever needed the one, and then I just put all my pieces back before I have another student that I'm going to work with. Um, but this is my board, so it will load, everything will pop up, and it comes right back into here. Okay, so the cool thing about Miro board is there's so much that you can design with it. That's a little board game down there that we're working on. So the only things that you will really need to do what I have done here are go to upload, my device, and then you would just locate, um, I had F my F FIS cards here, just like in my Google Drive. I have one saved on my computer as well. So you import all of your pictures. I think you can import multiple, so I just click the check. Yep, and then it would import all of those. I'm not gonna do that right now though. So it imports those. So then you have all of your sound cards and you have whatever pictures you created here and your tiles. Um, to create your tiles, you're gonna draw them yourself. So you just click this for shape. It gives you some shape options. You click your square. I create a little square however I want to. Then you have these options here. It creates it like a text box, but I don't need text. So I just select my color. This is your border, and then this is the inside of it. Let's make, there we go. Now it's red. And then I have a tile. And then from there, you just copy and paste. So I copy by clicking Control C and then Control V. Boom, I have another one. Control V, boom, I have three. Cool, there's my tiles. 
Okay, so it's relatively quick. Another cool feature, um, also I should mention this little black line is just like a bank that I made. It's another shape. I just clicked this shape and then I made that and that's where all of my little, those cards were gonna go. That's right, let's get rid of that. I'm gonna click over here, control D, now it's gone. Um, slightly lost my train of thought here. Um, oh, right, so the one really important thing that you're gonna wanna know is you can lock stuff down. So I have this locked down so my student can drag stuff on top of it. I moved the tiles. I right click on the tile and I click to move, bring forward. That way all my tiles are up at the front. And then I have this locked down. That way if my student does this and oh, it moves the whole board. It doesn't move your pieces everywhere. If you are gonna create some kind of game board like this, one of the things that makes it tedious is every single tile is locked down. So I imported the tile, I made the size how I wanted it to, stacked them all up, and then I locked each individual one down. That way, whenever the student moves their pieces, they aren't accidentally moving cards and wrecking the game board. Um, because that's what was happening at first, and it was really irritating. <laughs> so there's that. The last thing, and what I think is one of the coolest parts about Miro board, is they have, so if you click this, these little three dots down here, you have a bunch of options. To be honest, I don't really know what any of these things do except for icon finder. So you might have noticed I have some like cool little cars right here. So I got that from the icon finder. They have lots of different icons that you can use. So my student really likes racing and cars. So I built this little racetrack and typed in race car and they have some fun different options. Some of them aren't great, but a lot of them are really quite cool. Sometimes you get a little bit more specific than that. So um, he liked police cars. So I typed in that and some pretty cool ones pop up. All right, that is it for this video. I hope that that was helpful for you. Um, the only other thing that I didn't mention is whenever you are teaching foundation and sounds, Keep in mind that audio is really important. So right now I'm not wearing a headset. The sound probably isn't amazing on Zoom just through my computer. Um, so whenever I am teaching, I have a better headset that I use with a mic. Um, so I use the Logitech brand. I don't remember exactly which headset. To be honest, mine is currently broken and I'm in the process of getting a new one. Um, so I'm kind of shopping around there, but you just wanna use something that's gonna have a really good mic in it to make sure that the student can really clearly hear you. Also make sure you can clearly hear the student. <laughs> That's gonna be very helpful as well. The last thing that I'm gonna mention is Foundation and Sounds does have a student kit that can be purchased. So this may or may not be necessary depending on your student. Um, if you have an older student, they're probably gonna be really good at using the computer um, or you know, manipulating the mouse and moving tiles around and things like that. If you have a younger student, um, I found with the six-year-old that I was working with, um, this was kind of the first time that he had really sat down and used a computer for learning. And so using the mouse was kind of a challenge for him. So I had asked, um, I talked to the parent and they ended up ordering, it's a rental kit that they rents all of the supplies to them. It has all of the sound cards and everything. So whenever during those times it was really hard for him to use the mouse, um, he just had all of the cards out next to him and then he could sequence that way. I tried to get him away from that and I was successful. By the time we finished Foundation and Sounds, he had had a lot of practice using the mouse and it was a lot easier for him. But in the beginning, remembering the sounds and doing the mental process of the sequencing and then tacking on the mouse skills on top of that was just too much and it was a lot faster, he was a lot more efficient if he just had the physical cards. So that's kind of a judgment call on you, um, and you can always start working with your students, see how it goes, and then have them rent later. If they're older, they should be fine, though. Um, okay, yeah, that's all the tips I have for you. I hope that that was helpful. Um, if there's anything else that you have questions about or anything, you just let me know. Thanks.